All right, guys, this is part two of the video uh, on the 57 Chevy that we're working on um, spraying with Tamiya um, lacquer paints here. So I've got my <coughs> my fine surface primer Tamiya that I just pulled immediately out of the can of warm water. Um, it's been at room temperature for the past week or so, but I put it in a can of warm water just to make it nice and um, make it so that the solvents all mix together with the paint really well. So we're going to shake it up really good and put on my by the way I, I, I forgot to introduce this in my last video this is um, a paint booth that I got on Amazon it's probably one of the best investments I've ever made for model building because I can spray paint in the middle of the winter um, or middle of summer it doesn't matter I'm not gonna do it indoors uh, it's got a got a uh, vent tube right here that goes out you just kind of crack your window here and has a sorry has a variable fan and then you can dim the lights i just leave it on full brightness at all times but it has a fan that works fantastic in evacuating the room so again here's our 57 chevy with the first uh, couple of coats of primer we're going to go back to doing the same method where we do a couple of passes and we'll rotate it this rotisserie by the way I have a couple of these rotisseries. This one right here is by Tamiya. Uh, it, it's really good because it has like this spring clip thing. Kind of goes like this, and it has a couple of different, a couple of different holes here to set your tension for different sized bodies. And it works really, really, really well for doing these uh, model kit bodies. I have a couple others here. This is like more of a flat, flat platform that spins. Um, and it has a bunch of holes so you can stick toothpicks with alligator clips on them for parts. I have a different rotisserie as well. Kind of more of a platform rotisserie. It has these slots right here which these little alligator clips right here that are metal clip into and you can clip a part into there. I know these parts cost a little bit more than some people like to spend on some of this stuff. You can DIY some of this stuff if you want to. Uh, this is just really convenient and what's really great about this is it's all made out of uh, hard plastic you can just dip in your um, super clean tank and strip all the paint off after you know 10 or 15 paint jobs or whatever just so you can keep your uh, paint area nice and clean anyway we're going to get back to doing this car here notice i'm doing just light coats from a distance slowly building it up it's really nice to work with a fresh can Something else that the heat helps with is it kind of helps keep the pressure up in the can somewhat um, so that you can do it from a distance, get that fine mist spray pattern and get it on there. You notice how this is going on kind of glossy. I like to lay my paint down just a very slightest bit wet. And I also monitor it while I'm painting too. If I'm spraying from a distance, like from a real far distance like this, the mist pattern will eventually self-level into a more glossy looking or wet looking paint job and then it'll self-level on the body. What you don't want to do is you don't want it to build up and pool. Obviously this is a flat primer, it's not a gloss. The gloss that you're seeing right here is basically the paint turning into like a wet kind of very, very light pool on the surface. Um, and you, and you don't want to spray from too far of a distance either because you don't want the paint to dry before it gets to the body because then you'll end up with a really grainy or sandpapery looking paint job primer surface in this case um, so again we're just building up these really thin coats from a distance And again, we look at it up really close, inspect it. You can see a little bit of orange peel right here. And now you can fix that before that flashes. You can fix that orange peel by going just a little bit, a little bit more, and it'll gloss up and it'll self-level, and then that's gonna dry very flat. Again, what I really like, and I can't reiterate this enough about the fine surface primer, is that it seems like when it dries, it just kind of like, sucks to the surface and it self levels and it thins out as it dries unlike a lot of automotive primers or off-the-shelf Home Depot or Lowe's or Menards or you know whatever 
uh, like Krylon or um, Rust-Oleum, that kind of stuff tends to stay really thick, which again can be useful for hiding a lot of body flaws. In this case, we're just using up the fine surface primer here, because that's what I've got right now. Um, and we're gonna sand it down. We'll give this body enough coats to where you can't see through the ghosting on the body. I don't know that you can really see it really well, but you can kind of see a bit of a ghost line right here where it hasn't really fully covered the body. Um, eventually, that's all gonna go away. You don't wanna do it really quickly though. You really wanna do it in these nice thin coats and make it build up to a really nice, even job here. So once that's all built up, then you get to go back over it with thousand grit sandpaper and smooth it all down and get it ready for its color coat. I think other than a couple of things, another thing that's really good about these rotisseries is that you have to do like an under, like underneath the roll pan, I can come out here with the can and I can go right under that roll pan there. Get that lower edge. I gotta kinda, anytime you spray something that's kinda drying already, you wanna go over and make it a, a slightly wet coat so that those solvents help that paint melt into the coat that you just painted that was already drying. Otherwise, you're gonna get, again, that sandpaper effect. I'm gonna get the, hit the underside of the front end of this roll pan again. And there's a couple of like, hairs or strings or a little bit of dirt nibs in there. We'll, we'll worry about those later. Those are going to come out with the sanding. So anyways, this is already starting to dry. You can already kind of see how any area where it was glossy is starting to dull up. It's starting to look really, really good here. And we're starting to see that there's not a whole lot more. I'm going to go one more coat there. And by the way, you can also see here, you can see some of my panel lines where it's some filler hasn't quite, um, well, it's filled in the line there. So I'm going to have to go back through after the primer and I'm going to have to scribe those lines right here on the trunk lid to make the lines show up more. Um, and then right here on the door, just a little bit. This right here is because I had a a little cut right here where I slipped with an exacto knife and I had to refill it. Typical common mistakes that you make, you know, when building a model. Maybe maybe the pro guys don't make them, but I make those mistakes every once in a while and I gotta fix them. So, anyways, uh, stay tuned for the video number three.